Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 4 Episode 12 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. That is exactly how a rocket works too. When you have a controlled explosion and the only two places for the residual boom to go is up or to the side, it's going to be a lot of force and it's going to be a very high amount of acceleration for the monorail that he set up. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction thanks to Isaac Newton. And one of the things that we can take away from this is another one of Newton's laws, F is equal to MA. That is an equation a lot of physics students will be introduced to, probably just the first one you're introduced to besides e equals MC squared, but you don't actually use that or know how to apply that till later on. This is a fundamental law of the universe, and this equation is not wrong, Newton just was incomplete. The thing about this equation is that it assumes a constant mass, and this is acceptable for if you're calculating the force upon you from the planet's gravity, then your mass is constant whether or not you're on Earth, Mars, the Moon, anywhere in the universe. However, the acceleration is not. The way you are, if you went to the Moon, your body mass would not be different. The acceleration due to gravity of Earth's Moon is considerably less than the planet Earth, which is why you feel weightless. Though your actual mass is the same, your weight will be less than what it is on Earth. The correct version of this equation is F is equal to the derivative with respect to time of mass and velocity. The whole reason we gotta go through this rigmarole is because if you take the derivative with respect to time of velocity, you get acceleration. How you can verify that is by the units. SI units for velocity are meters per second, and for acceleration, they're meters per second squared. When you take the derivative with respect to time, it's just multiplied by 1 over S, which is the unit of time. A rocket or space shuttle is heaviest at the base right before launch because you have to factor in all of the fuel, the actual mass of the astronauts in there, the actual mass of the metal, and the, everything together is heaviest right before launch. As it begins to ascend is when the mass is decreasing with time. And that's because of the tons and tons of fuel that's being burned just to lift this thing off the ground. When it gets to certain altitudes is when the booster rockets will actually detach, which is further decreasing the mass of the system. No offense to Newton, I don't think he predicted SpaceX and Elon Musk or NASA. It is certainly something that needs to be accommodated. Mass is not always constant. Another example is your car. Your car is heaviest when it's full of gas. The longer you drive it, the lower the mass becomes because the more gas you're burning. As far as our heroes are concerned, they just gotta get the hell out of that tunnel as fast as possible. That's awesome! Zeno actually predicted what was gonna happen. The side with the more technology, in fact, won. And this was really, really clever of him to try to win over Chrome because Zeno's the only science user on that side. Senku's got him and Chrome and anyone else who's actually interested in this thing. The most buff dude that we've seen on the show is actually losing to a bunch of high school kids with a hand crank drill. Zeno doing his best to get Chrome on his side is just so, so wise. And after Chrome saw all of that 21st century technology and being wowed by this potential, just kudos to Chrome for staying loyal to Senku. That is a good man. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome! Oh my gosh, Ryusu is probably more familiar with this one than the Perseus because it's modern technology. The Medusa was shot next to the Perseus, and Chris Nolan is directing the Odyssey in Greece. Bet I have not read the manga, but how crazy would it be if? Oh, never mind. That's not Doctor Zeno can't be Y Man because he was petrified too. Who is Y Man? This episode is wild. Right? 
そして次の目的地こそなあ南米だ行くぞ数千年前人類を全員石化させたあの光線発信の地へ<音声>そそるぜこれは<笑> Yeah this this wasn't What an incredible episode! It had the perfect transition of part two, and how much fuel do they have? And how are they gonna get food? They gotta let Z. Alright, see, there's a lot of questions that are coming up, but th this was how they negotiated that treaty was perfect. I, I was, I'm really impressed. This was such a fun episode! If anyone knows when they're gonna start part two of the season, please tell me because I, I wanna know what happens. Science is no stranger to intellectual duos. Inspired by Henry Becquerel's discovery of radioactivity, this duo investigated uranium and thorium, coining the term radioactivity. They discovered and named two elements, polonium, named after Poland, and radium, known for its intense radioactivity. They won the Nobel Prize in 1903 together, shared with Henry Becquerel for their work in radioactive elements. Upon facing intense discrimination, they received a letter from Albert Einstein saying, Don't worry about the rest of the world, focus on your work, keep moving forward. After her partner in crime passed away, she won a second Nobel Prize in 1911 for chemistry, awarded for isolating pure radium, making her the first and only person to win a Nobel Prize in two different sciences. She invented a device to help doctors treat wounded soldiers in the battlefield of World War I called Little Curies. That device would later on be called the Mobile X ray. Together with her husband, they are the duo Marie and Pierre Curie. <laughs> 